If you've got questions about headlines, like the U.S. economy lost 140,000 jobs in December, all of them were held by women, keep in mind, we're talking about the overall net of all jobs lost and gained, meaning yes, it's accurate, and yet somehow worse. Women actually lost 156,000 jobs in December. It's just that men offset the total by gaining 16,000. What is really clear, just, just if you're just looking at that number or you're looking at the others, is that women are uh, still struggling from this pandemic recession that has really, from the very beginning, hurt them a lot more than it's hurt men. And to understand how much it's hurt women, economy reporter Chabeli Carazana says you have to go back a year. Last December was a completely different picture, and that's what's really sort of shocking about what's happened this year and this fall off, because in December of 2000. 19 now, um, women had surpassed men as more than half of the labor force for only the second time in history. And despite carrying those gains into February, when overall jobs plummeted in March, the disparity between men and women grew, and women's jobs have been slower to return ever since, before falling again last month. The reasons are twofold. Women are more likely to leave a job to stay home with kids who are remote learning or lack daycare. And the hardest hit areas of the economy, like hospitality, education, and public sector jobs are dominated by women. I think the biggest storyline out of what's happened in this recession is that it's been very unequal. And if you take white women out of the equation, who also gained jobs in December, it's even more unequal. The unemployment rate for white women is 5.7%. Compare that to 8 8.4% for black women and 9.1% for Latinas. It's very clear that communities of color, which are in these really vulnerable jobs at higher rates, they're the ones that are getting, really getting hit hard. What really concerns me about this particular set of circumstances is the overwhelming stress that women of color are facing as they try to raise kids, um, many of whom are doing so by themselves. My big fear is that people may give up and may stop looking um, for work. Zinzili Isoke is chair of Gender, Women and Sexuality Studies at the U of M and is seeing the impact of the growing gender and racial disparities firsthand. Just this morning, I was in a meeting with someone who was in tears because of how shattered she is as a result of everything that's happened in society. She says that includes the violence that erupted in Washington last week and the continued threats posed to state governments. She says not only is it making women of color worried for their safety, but also worried about being forgotten. What we're seeing right now is this turmoil, which is completely looking away from the concerns of, you know, people of color, women of color, um, and how they're suffering in this economy right now. Now, the worry here is that these losses and this disparity will last for years to come. And Chabelli says that that's particularly true and worrisome when it comes to public sector or government jobs. She says those are just beginning to show up. They typically do because states and governments rely on budgets that are then reflected in the years to come. She said in 2009, when they analyzed the numbers, it took three years for those jobs to come back, Jana. Kent, the day before what happened in D.C. last week, we heard Democrats talking about wanting to make another run at stimulus money, aid for people, since they will soon have control of the Senate. But are there ways to target these disparities beyond $2,000 checks for just every single person? Is there a way that we can surgically get to who needs help right now? Well, that's clearly the big question. There are a lot of people trying to look and grapple with that. Certainly those targeted efforts like rental assistance and things geared toward family, getting food on the table. But another big one because of that government concern with those types of jobs is getting aid to those states and cities that need it and are decimated right now with their budgets, Jana. Yeah, that's a fair point. Cities and states, I've heard that a lot. In Minneapolis, for example, people I know that have worked for the city, just talking about just how tight things are, and, and obviously job loss or furloughs will come from that. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to see how this pans out, but we'll stay on it. Thanks so much, Kent. We'll be right back. Thanks. Thanks.